Hey guys, Steph here. In this vlog, I am going to go over five things that you can do to speed up your web development workflow. Once again, trying to answer a question, trying to answer questions rather in the YouTubes. I get so many questions, whether it be through YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, uh, email, etc., etc. It's very difficult for me to answer even a small fraction of them, so I try to choose some here and there. Of course, at this time, I'm busily working on getting Studio Web 4 uh, fully launched, and that's just about done. So once that relaxes, I'll be able to do more Q&A and just more vlogging in general. So before I get into it, here's my view. This is now October 24th in Montreal, so it's getting kind of cold. It's like two degrees out, but we got the uh, autumn leaves coming in. It's quite nice. And uh, there you have it. All right, I'll see you on the inside. All right, let's, uh, let's answer some nerd questions. So, five things to speed up your website and development workflow. Number one, use a good IDE. IDE is show for Integrated Development Environment. There are many out there. Here are some recommended ones. If you're doing Python, PyCharm. If you're doing PHP, PHPStorm. If you're doing Ruby, change to another language. That's a joke, that's a joke. You might want to also consider Microsoft's IDEs because they tend to be really good. So you can check into that. The point being, with point number one, finding a good IDE or code editor that does code completion, all kinds of other things, will really speed up your workflow quite a bit. So it's good to find one, invest in it, understand it, learn it, it's gonna save you a lot of time. Number two, try to take projects that fit into your current workflow or framework. This is one of the things I was doing in my development career once I got established. I had developed my own framework from scratch because in those days, I didn't like the framework I had. Uh, let me just point out, these days, you shouldn't develop your own framework unless it's a very, very specific thing. The frameworks are so good these days and they weren't too good back in the 90s relative to today. So I developed my framework around the type of work I typically did. And then when I got new clients with this framework, I would essentially choose projects and structure the projects that aligned well with my framework, which saved me a huge amount of time, which made me very productive. Sometimes it was a selling situation where I had to convince the client that this was the better approach and a lot of times it was because the framework was put together over a period of a year or two i forget what it was now it could be three years based on my experience so it had kind of like best practices put into the place what does that mean i had figured out the best way to do very common tasks like authentication database access uh data scrubbing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. UI, UI uh, typical UI structures. This is all put into place into my framework. So I would sell my clients on, this is the way it should be laid out because I've learned over time that this is the best way to approach this. And most of the time they would go with it because you could also say, listen, I'm gonna save you money by doing it this way. So back to point number two try to take projects on that fit into your current workflow and any frameworks that you use and part of that is a selling job part about part of that if you're a freelancer especially is just choosing projects that uh, align with you number three uh, leverage mature framework frameworks and libraries try to stay away from cutting edge libraries and frameworks unless they provide some sort of really unique emphasize unique functionality advantage that you can't find in a mature technology. As a nerd, I fully embraces and understand this. You want to get the newest and the latest. You want to get the newest and the latest. You want to do the newest. Now, I remember most recently with Node as an example, few, going back a few years, Node had, um, as, as any newer framework, as it was maturing, there's a lot of package conflicts, and uh, so you would install the latest version of a package, and it would conflict with something else, and it caused things to break, and there was like this package hell in the Node world, in the Node ecosystem. Now, I'm sure it's matured and it's cleaned up over time, and it might be perfect now, I don't know. I'm just using this as an example back in the day. 
And uh, so people would spend so much time, wasting so much time trying to install the latest and greatest packages that they didn't really need to do because there was much more mature technology out there that did the job and they didn't have to waste their time on these packages. Yes, it's fun to learn and do new things, but when you're choosing technology stacks as the basis of your development workflow, choose mature technology stacks so you don't waste your time dealing with the growing pains of a new tech. Number four, get UI mockups in front of clients as soon as possible and iterate as quickly as possible. The best way for you to refine and define what a web app is going to be is to get UI, the UI, the screens, the views in front of your clients as soon as possible. Because I can tell you, I'm sure a lot of people confirm this on this channel, clients don't really know what they want specifically until they actually use it, until they actually see it. So I would just get, the first thing I do is just build out UIs as quickly as possible. I would sketch it out on a, on a pad or on paper. Well, back then I just used pad, pad and paper. And then um, I would present it to the client very quickly. Okay, we're gonna put this here, we're gonna have this. This is page one, this is page two. We have this view, the button will be here. And we go over it like that quickly. And that would help, but then I would mock it up in, uh, in, in, quick, in HTML or I'd mock it up in Photoshop or something like that. These days I would just use HTML because you got, uh, you got editors that make this easy, quick, and get it in front of their faces as quickly as possible. Not functionally, but just not so that, you know, you don't want to build the whole system. You want to have just the screen. Say, okay, screen one, screen two, screen three. This is where button placement, blah, blah, blah. This is what the functionality is. When somebody clicks here, this happens. You can mock all of this up quickly in, in HTML and you get the feedback from your client as quickly as possible. Iterate quickly this way so that you can, so you can get, uh, you can have something concrete that you can show your clients so that you don't waste time building something, you know, creating all the functionality and all the database interaction, then having to change core behavior in your application because the, the, the client they didn't quite know what they wanted until they saw it. So yeah, just get an UI in front of your client's faces as quickly as possible. Number five, when you're first developing a web app, don't be a perfectionist when you're developing the version one. Don't be a perfectionist. My profitability as a freelancer skyrocketed when I realized this, and I would just get the code out, get something functional, out on the web as quickly as I possibly could. It would be pretty rough and tumble code, but again, a good framework will help mitigate against that. But it was just to get it out there, get it into the user's hands as quickly as possible. If you try to write super rock solid code with use test in place and all kinds of fancy, all kinds of fancy stuff in there, like tons of comments and all, whatever it is that you do to make your code rock solid, for version one of software, I recommend you don't do this. Now people will be, whoa, what are you saying, Steph? Well, I've, I've gone through the cycle many times, the cycle meaning building apps many times, and I found that doing that is just a waste of time. So, to conclude, the five, the five things I would recommend that will speed up your web development workflow is number one, get a good IDE and get to know it well. Number two, try to take projects that fit into your current workflow and frameworks. Number three, leverage and get to know mature, underline mature frameworks and libraries. Stay away from cutting edge stuff because they, the cutting edge stuff will probably result in you having to waste a lot of time dealing with the growing pains of any cutting edge technology. The one exception, is if the, you, there's something unique about that technology, something that they cannot be reproduced elsewhere. Very rare circumstances these days. Number four, get UI mock-ups mock -ups in front of clients as soon as possible and iterate as quickly as possible. So important. Number five, don't be a perfectionist when deploying new web apps. Just get the code out. Don't go crazy. Don't write crappy code, but don't try to optimize algorithms and and uh, and try to create super optimized code 
with your first iteration because it's going to change. Things are going to change quite a bit. Just get it out quick. Get it out quick. For instance, with Studio Web, we're do, we just finished Studio Web 4. We're just finishing up the final touches. I didn't rewrite Studio Web until after seven years and a huge number of users have used it because could have done it a couple of years ago, but basically we perfected what the use case is. So we know exactly what of the platform should do and how it should operate, what reports were needed, what reports weren't needed, because we had all kinds of stuff in there we put in, and we found out nobody cared about it, so we had to take it out. So after all these years where we know exactly what it should do and how it should work, then I pulled the trigger on the rewrite from scratch where we're writing really solid code. But we're writing really solid code this time because we know exactly what has to happen, how it has to work. The first version of Studio Web was rough and tumble, had its warts, but it worked for years and we supported tons of students, even though it was like, you know, some parts of that code was really, tr real trash, I totally admit it. But it's because it was just put out quick and we actually, when we first, to give you an idea, when we first developed the Studio Web beta uh, back in prototype back in the day, I had an inclination of what I thought the use case would be. When I say use case, meaning I had a pretty good idea of how it was going to be used and what was going to be considered valuable and useful to people and not. But I didn't have it all right. I had maybe 60% of it. So there's a lot of uh, patching that had to be done, a lot of uh, you know, twisting of the code and uh, the core application. So eventually we got it to where it is and now, again, after so many years, now the rewrite from scratch we know exactly what the blueprint has to be, so it's, 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 now it's a beautiful uh, code base with the new version, but that's because we know what we're doing, we, you know, in terms of, not technical skills, but in terms of what the business model had to be and how the, the code had to support that business model. Anyway, I hope that makes sense, and uh, I'm recording this with my, uh, my little camera, because it's just easier. All right, ciao.